and grandpa Let's wander back into the past Then paint me the picture of long ago Welcome back to Hill Farms. All right, the year's 1938. They got a farm to start. Middle of the Great Depression, but maybe a little towards the end of the Great Depression. So money's tight, there's not a lot of equipment. They moved from East Weisport out here in Mahoning Valley, top of the mountain. They bought a farm. the operation. Yeah, uh, they, they bought a farm that was run down. Where do you even begin? I mean, how do you even start? Because uh, no one wants to give a loan to a business here that's un it's really an unproven business at that point. Uh, and there wasn't a whole lot of banks to give loans. So uh, how did they get it started? They didn't get a bank loan. They, they scooped and scraped the money together themselves. I mean, they sacrificed an awful lot just to get the money together to buy this farm. And like I said before, you had to see what they bought. I mean, this was a rundown piece of property. I mean, when you see it today, as beautiful as it is, and you think of what, it, well, what I think of what it was then, it's just hard to believe how it transitioned. Yeah, that, uh, I don't think you can really appreciate, especially uh, today, the generation today, can really appreciate what they had to go through, uh, just to come up with the money, let alone then to buy what well, you needed to buy. Well, it was a risk. Buy. They took a risk. I mean, they they knew that they could lose it all. I mean, they... Uh, all right, so you got to think about this. Their mindset here is, okay, it's hard to come up with money. People are losing their houses. There's no work. And we're going to start a business. We're going to raise a product that you don't really need. And uh, not a lot of people are doing it, so it's not proven that it can be done. But we think we can do it. Uh, so we're going to go out and buy a farm that's run down. And uh, we have no equipment. Don't really have the knowledge on how to do this. Uh, but they ventured into this, uh, I guess, with both feet and, uh, and gave it a shot. Well, they did. And they depended on the fact that they learned as they went along, which is what they did. I will say, though, they were, uh, particularly Uncle Boss was always an entrepreneur, I'll say. He always had ideas that were ahead of the time. Now, he maybe wasn't an entrepreneur when it came to equipment and everything because he believed in hand labor. But uh, when it came down to doing things, he always saw I had a vision of the future. His belief was if you want to be in business, you want to be ahead. You don't want to be following other people. You want to lead the industry. Well, and that's really <laughs> served this farm well uh, because we've learned from that same blueprint right. uh, with many things that we've done since then because it worked for him and it turned out it worked for us. But So they're going to start out, uh, really had no equipment, uh, and there wasn't a lot of equipment to buy. And I guess even if there was equipment, they probably wouldn't have been able to afford it. So. So they have this farm, so now they got to get this farm in shape. So the, the first pieces of equipment they bought, uh, what, are we, what are we talking about here? The first piece of equipment was probably shovels, spades. Yeah. <laughs> Might have been the only piece of equipment they, that they and had. And then they had strings to make the road straight, and uh, that's how they went about it. They planted it by hand and planted it pretty well in grass. So no big tractors? Uh, oh, they had no big tractor. No, no real equipment? To in fact, in the buses, Uncle Buzz's whole time on the farm, he never bought a tractor, a big, big tractor. He had small tractors. But he didn't have any tractors at that time, no. Well, he was very fortunate because the era that he ran the farm, there was an incredible pool of men uh, that were used well, to doing very physical work. So you could get uh, the men were labor for almost nothing. I mean, that was, yeah, uh, most men were used to doing manufacturing right. type work or tradesmen. So at 25 cents an hour. Yeah, so, so the going, okay. So you say the price that they paid for the farm, uh, when yeah. they bought the farm, was... $300. $300 for the original farm. It was about 28 land. to 29 acres, something like that. Yeah. It was boiled down about $10 an acre. All right. So it sounds like a heck of a deal. Yeah. Uh, but you have to put this in the context of what was going well, on at the time. And you got to realize this was an isolated area. There was nothing but a dirt road leading up there. There was no electricity. There was nothing here. This was isolated. There was not another house in sight. I mean, they, they were right, really out, what you could say would be the wilderness. Yeah, this was 1938. I remember coming out here as a kid, and I was born in 66, so it was the uh, early 70s that I have memories, and there was still nothing here at that time. So not they were much. really out here. There was one or two homes, and that was it. Right. So this was the wilderness, and uh, you know, just that in itself, uh, to come out here and be on your own like that, uh, you know, is, is, is pretty interesting. So. So they did that, and uh, once again, $300 sounds like a bargain, but if a man worked, uh, what did you get on uh, farm labor? A dollar a day, maybe? A uh, farm labor was probably a dollar a day for a 10-hour day. Yeah, so it would take an awful long time. You can put that in perspective, yeah. how long it would take you to save up the money to buy a parcel. Well, Uncle land. Buzz had a little better job. He was working for insurance, and he was a college graduate. So he had to, he could come up with the money for the Gerhards, it was tough. Yeah, what, what, did, uh, what did Joe do? Joe was a welder. 
He was a welder. He worked in steel, and uh, that's one of the reasons he didn't get into World War II. He was older, and uh, he had a critical skill. Yeah. So, so and that's probably, once again, uh, he was good with his hands, so he was the guy that got uh, you know a lot of the work done that was right. necessary to get he done. Right, got a lot of the work done. Then. So, uh, with that said, they had to get plants, and uh, you know the the idea here at the time was Scotch pine was the tree. If you were going to try this Norway spruce, there was maybe. one farm in the area. The farm near us, it's now the Beck farm. That was a Steigerwald farm, and they were in a tree business. And of course, the main tree then was Scotch pine. Uh, there was some um, spruce. Norway spruce was also a popular tree, and there was a few people that grew spruce. But there weren't many tree farms around, and they weren't big. So, Uncle Buzz somewhere came up with the idea he was going to try something different. Well, yeah, and he got, they all laughed at him. So, I mean, yeah. Anybody who knew anything about trees laughed at his idea. And his idea was to bring Douglas fir in from the West Coast. And they told him they'll never grow here, nobody wants them, and so forth. Well, he brought them in anyway. That's the kind of guy he was. He was always ahead, and uh, he put them in, and they thrived. Well, that's an interesting point for us to stop here, because... Uh, our next episode, we're going to talk about uh, how this vision of his, how it shaped up, took place, uh, and uh, how that really transformed uh, not just our farm, but really it transformed the tree industry. He was part of the forefront of, of that transition uh, well, to, he was. to modern day trees. We were probably the first people to have big cuts of Douglas fir. People used to come from all over just to see them. We had two crops of Douglas fir before most people got into them. Yeah, and that was a, a, as hard as that was to get started, that was a huge advantage. So we'll talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about a madman running wild in Europe. We're going to talk about a, uh, a cruise to the South Pacific and uh, how this farm survived during the, uh, the terrible years uh, where World War ravaged the earth. So tune in next week uh, for another uh, episode. We hope you enjoy our series, The History of Hill Farms. If you have any questions about anything that you've seen in the video, please uh, post a, a question in the comments section and we'll try to get back to you. Also, if there's anything you'd like to see in future episodes, please let us know. Thanks a lot. Grandpa, tell me about the good